Kitchener's new army. Men ready to serve the king and country. And he gives them walking sticks to shoot with. At least they got new uniforms now. Where's Harry? Wasn't on the train. Half past one's the next. Hey. Have you told your mother yet? It's my business. It's not right that you... Mr. Collins is waiting for that cartwheel. If you're joining up, your mother's not got a right to know. Up. I told you in an interview, that's all. Hey, youngin. There's a war on that cold cuss. He wasn't on that one. I know, I saw you coming. Half past one. That new frog. Oh, I better take these off. They pulled away to nothing by the time he gets here. New? When did I buy this then? Well, I haven't seen it before. Three years. There's that in the wardrobe. Hoarding, eh? Government penalties for that now, you know. Before your father died. Suits me, this colour. Oh, Arthur Collins hasn't called for his car tyre yet. Haven't shrunk the new tyre on yet. Lightning, Thomas. Oh, no, no. Well, can't hurry in. There's a war on. His favourite saying these days keeps them all at bay. Over by Christmas. Here we are, well into the spring. Told Arthur Collins he could collect it this afternoon. Oh, have you been up at the farm, then? Well, it's passing, so I thought I might as well. Was Lorna there? Well, she's a beautiful bust of BE2. She's turned in a very nice girl. Now Albert Warren's joined up, she'll have to do the milk run, she says. Heavy work, those milk runs. Oh, well, women doing all sorts now. Coming out of Claiborne's factory like men. Hands as black as a devil in the language, oh. Well, their father shouldn't have known it, should he? Oh, Colonel Stark's motor car's broke down again. Oh, not again. Well, what do you expect the way he treats it? Driving a Daimler over ploughed land. You should put a saddle on it, I'll tell him that. <laughs> Tom says we've made a start in the new war office contract. Yeah, start is right. He's making every shoe as if it's going on the horse of a general, at least. Oh, aeroplanes. It's time you found another interest. Such as? But why don't you ask the poor girl to tea, at least? She's running out of excuses for coming here. I've got a cupboard full of eggs, as it is. Well, I think I'll call on Colonel Stark and away at the station. I wonder how bad it is. What? Uncle Harry. Got a blighty wound. Eight lines in his last letter. Three years since we've seen him. Your father's funeral. Invalided out. Must be bad. Luke Evans' new shovel's ready yet. Shovels are, but no handles. You kill me? Well, I tell him. I'm telling that our captain's on the square in Caxton, marching up and down with a wooden rifle. Ted was a fool joining up like that. His wife says she's proud of him. It's that damn Miss Edwards chipping all the men to join up. Women of Britain say go. Union Jack in the front gate, marching up and down like a sergeant major. Oh, they should put her in a trench. Fill it in if I'd my way. Soon there'll be no men left at all in Beckett's Hill if she is her way. Uncle Harry? Alan? I hardly recognised you. <laughs> Three years. You grand. Surprised to get my letter? Well, if we'd known before, would have come to see you. Oh, well. Now I come to see you. Well, you look well enough, Harry. Bully beef or no? The old place hasn't changed much. Accepting them new doors back there. Eh, last job Ted May did before he took the king shilling. Ted May. <laughs> Aye. Well, well, 16 years since you left here, eh? 17 going on. No more shoe horses for me, he says. Sitting astride one with his saddle. <laughs> <laughs> and ended up a farrier. <laughs> Boars they was then, afore you were thought of, lad. 
Well, they found a good fairy when they knew one, eh? We ought to go in the house, Uncle Harry. Oh, it's one ever look in this room here. Won't be farriers they'll be needing soon. Mechanics, according to this one. Well, already tried to turn the place into a garage. Had a pump outside if the war hadn't come. Motor cars for miles to fill up, he says. Well, we have to move with the times. Move? Aye. But not rush headlong. Father found that out. Harry. Molly. How are you? Oh, I'm well. Uh, the dinner's all ready. You must be hungry. Hi, I am. I'll see you later then, Tom. Aye, Harry. Take note, young A good farrier he were. You thank God for your two hands. And use them on the broom. We need deeping filings round here. Right, Sam. We're back on Collins' cart, lad. <laughs> you were four years old, Dan, and I were just back from South Africa. He brought you back some wooden soldiers. You made them yourself, if I remember right. I, I did. You didn't say in your letters, so we didn't quite know what to expect. Did you see many of them new BE2s when you're over there? BE2s? Uh, we borrowed a spare bed from Tom. You will stay the night. Well, if it won't be putting you out. No, not at all. Well, I'd put the bed against the far wall, so you won't be in the draft from the window. <laughs> yeah. It was his old room. Your mother always wanted that room when she first married your father and moved in here. But I wouldn't be shifted. Eighteen. Selfish age. Keeping house for two brothers? Me straight from the town? What oh, a devil of a dance they led me, I can tell you. Uh, hey, there's a Collins out here waiting for cart. The one with the dimples. Hello? Hello? One of the spoke ends on the wheel needed looking at. But we won't charge for that, tell you, Father. Are you taking on the milk round there, then? Yes. So I shall get round the village more now, talk to people. It can be a bit lonely working on the farm. Yes. Well, there we are, then. Thanks. Can you manage? Yes, thanks. Well, I'll come part the way with you, see the new tyres on proper. She and Alan were in the same class as school. See them today on that cart, you'd think they were complete strangers. Alan T. I wrote to you about a month after you came for Will's funeral, but you'd gone. I well, <clears throat> travelled around a lot after I left the regular army. Couldn't settle. Six or seven jobs. You're a blacksmith? Aye. What are you going to do? No, I me. Mean. Well, I don't know. I didn't plan too much. Restless Will always used to say you were. <laughs> Chalk and cheese, would I know? Alan thinks you look like him. Like Will, I mean. You're welcome to stay till you've decided what you want to do there. Thank you. I couldn't believe it, you know. Even when Tom explained it all to me on the day of the funeral. Yeah, I guess that. Well, you never knew anything about it then. Learning to fly. Whatever possessed him, Molly. Conway Stark. 
his father up at the manor. Oh, money they says. Where did Conway stock at the aeroplane? Well, he bought it, well, what was left of it. It had crashed in one of these flying exhibitions. He and Will were 18 months in Collins's barn putting it to rights. Right. Will were always clever with mechanical things. But learning to fly. Oh, Conway Stark could learn so well, would. I always said no good would come of it. He just laughed. He said it was a coming thing. Soon everybody would be flying thing, nothing of it. Yeah. Clever, as you say. Making things of iron. Things that would last and give service. Lose his life over a lot of useless wires and wood. This minute your mother says or she's clearing the table. She's coming. The money's worth the books. Most of them belong to Conway Stark. That's me, Dad, and Conway Stark. Is that the machine? Yes. Look, here's the B2 I was asking you about. Oh, yes. I think we did see some of those. But what about the Huns? Did you see many of theirs? To be honest, we couldn't tell one from the other. I suppose we didn't look very close. If they were flying high, we didn't bother. If they were flying low, we shot at them. Without knowing which side they were on? Some of us reckoned that none of them was on our side. Up there in the clean air, off to a warm bed and a hot meal. Most of them are officers transferring from the cavalry. Ah, oh, well, they are taking some civilians now. Aye. If they're off the train from Eton. an interview for the war office on Monday. Ah. Uh, Tom told me. Said so we weren't to say nothing to your mother. I haven't got your heart up high enough to tell her yet. She wouldn't understand. Says he'll drive him to the station on Monday. To the station? If Alan lets him know the time of the train. On Monday? Alan's not going anywhere Monday. Well, the Colonel seems to think he's gone up to London. <laughs> there. The missus is late with the tea. Get me shovels at last, then, Tom. Aye. That may would have done him in a wink, but I'm no carpenter. <laughs> Nor is Alan. Claybourne's factory going over to munitions, right? Yeah. Offered you a job, I hear. Job. Watched out to a lot of women. <laughs> Machine work and women doing it. A recipe for poor quality, if you like. We can do without Ted May, I suppose, but if Alan goes as well... He'll be needing a new pair of hands. Uh, 
better start looking. Well, Alan's never mentioned London to me. I expect the Colonel got it wrong. Oh, well, Tom's dying a Thursday up there. Hello. Hello. Colonel Stark seems to think you're going to London on Monday. Yes. Well, I've been meaning to tell you. Let's see him at the war office. The war office? For an interview. This Monday? Yes. Well, this is a fine thing, isn't it? Well, you've seen the posters. They're one man. Thousands are joining up all over the joining country. Joining up? They're being slapped on the back and told what jolly good fellows they are. An interview, you What's said. What's so different about me? But it's that dumb Miss Edwards. It's nothing to do with Miss Edwards. She's been at you for a code. She gave you the white feather, didn't oh, she? I'm sorry if I've... How long have you known about this? Two weeks. Joining up and not telling me? Well, I was going to tell you, and I'm not joining up. Just going for an interview, that's all. See if I'm suitable. Suitable for what? Trains a pilot in the Royal Flying Corps. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause any... Colonel Stark said he drove you to the station. That's all right. You should have told Mum before this. I'd better go. Goodbye, Mrs Farmer. Nora. I understand how it is for you. And I know that some have to go. I just wish I could be like the others and say go and good luck. Oh, you don't me not now. Well, Uncle Harry says I ain't got much chance anyway. They won't accept me. They are seeing you. Well, Colonel Stark wrote a letter of recommendation. Well, well, that's it, isn't it? It's all arranged. Did they write you a letter? Yes. Could I see it? It's an interview. I'm not joining up. I'd like to see the letter. It's only one of them dear sir letters. It's not signed by the king or anything. Oh, don't joke, Callum, please. If you're worried about the smithy, well, even if they do take me, the place runs itself. It's only a matter of finding another man. Oh, plenty of those about, of course. And fetch your suit while you're up there. You'll need a press for London. I thought if I'd grow a moustache, it'd make me look older. You have to be 18 for a commission, so the RFC's my only chance now. And they want young chaps. You have to be 17, then. Well, I am 17. Well, I shall be in August. We all have no trouble at all at transferring from the cavalry. Not all our chaps get in, far from it. If you can ride a horse, you can fly an aeroplane. That's what they say. <laughs> Goes. Oh, good luck. Come in. Well, I suppose you thought the same. Your own marvellous idea. When you get here, find half the young chaps in the country want to be flyers. Hmm. You're not one already, eh? Huh? Used to think I was when I was 15. Hmm. And my father worked for a chap who had a machine. He used to let me taxi. But you uh, never actually got to fly? Took her a few feet off the ground once. My father near skimmed me alive. <laughs> Couldn't you fly it later on? When you rolled her, I mean. He crashed her. He was killed. Ah. You see, Galian, there are chaps who can and chaps who can't. And most of you can't, believe me. I know I can fly an aeroplane, sir. Yes, of course you do. You all do. But we haven't got machines all the time to give everyone a shot at it. Well, sir, I, uh, I do play rather a lot of tennis. I gather that might be important. Yes, it is. Hmm. Hussars. Well, I shan't ask you if you can ride a horse. <laughs> Might as well ask me if I can walk, sir. Are you a good soldier, Galian? Yes, sir, I am. <clears throat> Someone who might disagree? Your CO, perhaps? <laughs> Doesn't want you to transfer, eh? I know. Nasty, smelly things, aeroplanes. Hardly suitable conveyances for gentlemen. What's your opinion, Galian? Well, sir, uh, uh, no one loves horses more than I do, but, uh, well, the war being as it is, uh, two wings in the air are rather more nippy than four hooves in the mud. <laughs> Aren't they? <laughs> well, Galian, you seem to have all the right qualifications. 
Thank you, sir. The question is, have you also got all the wrong ones? Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand, sir. No, neither do I. But an awful lot of chaps like you get sent back to their regiments. How are you mechanically? Don't the troops do all that, sir? What if you're forced down over enemy lines? The troops will all be Huns. Well, if, if it's a matter of reading it up, it's I It's a could... matter of getting some grease on your hands. Stand up, will you? I, I know what you're thinking, sir, but I have actually sat in one, and there was heaps of room, honestly. You're not going to turn me down, are you, sir? Well, they're giving me a shot at taking my ticket, whatever that may mean. Your pilot certificate. Ah, well, I'm to report on the 9th, Beechwood Reserve Squadron. Oh, I'm uh, Charles Galen, by the way. Alan Farm. Hello. Well, Wait till I tell them in the mess. Oh, uh, best of luck. Come in. Farmer, isn't it? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Sit down, will you? Thanks, sir. How old are you? Eighteen, sir. You can count, I hope. You get a lot of chaps in here who can't. Oh, well, it was eighteen on the day I wrote for the interview, sir. Letter here from Colonel Stark. Says you're just the chap we're looking for. Are you? I hope so, sir. Colonel's a relative, is he? Oh, no, sir. Well, he's a friend of the family. Well, we... Says you're the best shot he's ever seen. I was lucky that day, sir. They were running to my right. The rabbit, sir. When they're running to my left, I've been known to miss one. Hmm. You ride a horse, farmer? Yes, sir. Good. I can shoe one as well, sir. Shoe one? Yes, sir. I'm a blacksmith, sir. This letter from Colonel Stark suggests oh, that I you're see to his motor car, sir. That's a Daimler. A blacksmith? Looking for blacksmiths, you know. Oh, yes, sir. I've seen the posters, but uh, I'd like my chance to train as a pilot, please. Sir. No, I can't help you there, I'm afraid. You need a commission. Oh, but you, uh, you are taking some non-commissioned pilots now, sir, aren't you? Yes, we are. Chaps who've earned their chance to train as pilots. Mechanics and gunner observers who put in their hours at the front. But, but I believe you are taking some civilians now, too, sir. Some, yes. If chaps from school, from, from study, and playing the right sort of games. Sorry, farmer, but there it is. Thank you for seeing me, sir. Disappointed, eh? I am, rather, sir. Mm -hmm. Reading all the magazines, hmm? Flight and the aero. Yes, sir. <laughs> Pictures of smiling aviators. If they can do it, you can do it, eh? I oh, know if I had my chart, sir, I could take my ticket. So you think I'm being unfair? Yes, I suppose I do. Look, farmer, if you were a commissioned officer, you'd have a head start. Shall I tell you why? A commissioned officer is a trained in military observation, sir, so they'll know what to look for from the air. Well, there's another reason, nothing to do with flying. Yes, sir, the Royal Flying Corps is still very young, sir. Uh, a commissioned officer helps to promote esprit de corps. You know all the answers, do you, farmer? Well, I've been reading books on flying since I was 13, books sir. Books won't help you to fly an aeroplane. Your brains need to be in your hands. That's what my grandfather used to say, about being a good blacksmith. You see the motor cars, eh? Yes, sir. I picked it up from my father. He had a way with engines. Have you ever seen a gnome aero engine? No, sir, but I have worked on a 35 horsepower green, sir. Mm -hmm. This one, sir. Is that you? Yes, sir. Uh, my father and, and the owner of the machine. We rebuilt her. Well, I handed up the tools. Good. Well, there's no doubt about you, farmer. An engine fitter. 
Two shillings a day and all found. How does that sound to you? Well, I think I'd be more valued, of course, as a pilot, sir. Well, you can't do it all in one gulp with nothing at your back. Start as a mechanic. You'll do some flying. Oh, you're a fair shot. Go on to be a gunner. You fancy yourself as a strong man, acrobat, and clay pigeon rolled into one? Earn your observer's badge and worry us to send you home to train as a pilot. Oh, yes, I know. The war might end next week and you won't get your chance. Well, there is another way. What's that, sir? Learn to fly at your own expense. Get your Aero Club certificate and come back and see me again. Seventy-five pounds? Easier on you, but harder on your pocket. But it's not really necessary. I mean, in my case, I mean... So... You'll have learned to fly. And then we'd be assured that you're not going to waste our time. But if I'd already learned to fly, it's an awful lot of money to spend on a piece of paper. Already learned to fly? When I was 15, sir. And Mr Stark lent me a copy of Mr Graham White's How an Airman Learns to Fly, and I used to sit Mr there... Stark? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Colonel Stark's son, the, the owner of the machine, sir. We well, kept her in a barn, and I used to go down there some evenings and sit behind the controls, and then he used to let me taxi around the Have field. Have you been flying to... this machine? Yes, sir. But why the devil didn't you tell me so before? I could have weighed all these damn silly questions. O.C. Beechwood Reserve Squadron on the 9th. Oh, not more shirts. You want to look your best? Well, I can only wear one at a time, can't I? You can be meeting better people. Different, not better. I want to say cheer over the lads. I understand them not giving him a uniform. Well, as he says, he's not joining up. It's a sort of test. Be home again in a few days' time, you see. Thank you. To the manager of Claiborne's factory. Thank him. He's found me a lodging in Caxton. Oh. I suppose it would be difficult for you travelling back and forth. Excuse me, missus. I spoke to the wife, Harry, and she said you'd bring your things over when you want. Well, it's very good of her, Tom. Nothing of the kind. She's as pleased as punch is staying with us. Thank you. Offered. I can't stay on here, not without him going out the house. It'll only be for a few weeks, and then I'll be off to Caxton. Beechwood is our newest reserve squadron, so you'll have to bear with the rather primitive accommodation and the lack of some of the more usual amenities, I'm afraid. You're here to have a shot at taking your ticket, your pilot certificate. As you may know, we're desperately short of machines, so we can't waste time with chaps who are not up to taking their tickets in, well, what may seem to be an alarmingly short time. 
But there are chaps who can do it. Those are the chaps we want. And those chaps will go on to fly the Avro and the BE, if and when they're available. When they've soloed in these machines, can do satisfactory flights by compass, pass their tests in lamp signaling, engine fitting and rigging, then they'll be able to put up their wings. They'll then be posted to a squadron for further training and to put in the required number of hours. Then they'll be sent to a squadron at the front. For civilians, of course, it's rather different. Civilians need to do their initial army training first, their feet firmly on the ground and in a strong pair of boots. And there we are then. Is there anything you'd like to ask? Uh, yes, sir. Our instructor, sir. Have we been appointed one yet? Yes. You'll all be with Captain Triggers, one of our best flyers, transferred from the engineers when the RFC was formed three years ago. Captain Triggers flew one of the first machines over the Western Front. Well, which of you is Farmer? I am, sir. Ah. You've already done some flying, of course. Uh, yes, sir. Right, carry on. I must say. You told me you hadn't done any flying. I haven't. You, you mean you told the Major at the interview that you... No. Why? It's my only chance. I took some pluck. Said it without thinking. Oh. Well, what will you do? I don't know. Head in the sack and head for the best, I know. Still, no work tomorrow, though, will it? I mean... Well, I suppose they ask you to show them what you can do. I don't think they will. Well, if you've told them you could fly, they'll... <clears throat> Talk to the adjutant right now. Make a clean breast of it. Well, that's what I do. Well, it's different for you, isn't it? Where are you from? Back at Snow. Oh, where is that? Sussex. What do you do? I'm a blacksmith. Still think you should talk to the adjutant. Hey, wait a minute, I've got a better idea. Here's our instructor, Captain, what's his name? Triggers. Captain Triggers, yes. Well, flying chaps are different. The chaps that really do the flying, I mean. I've heard they don't give two hoots about rules and regulations. Some even rather like flaunting them, so I've heard. Well, if he's decent and he's bound to be, he'll understand that you lied because, well, you were desperately keen and... Uh, if your engine cuts on takeoff, never turn back. Never! Do you understand? Now get that into your heads this minute. This second. Now I wasn't here to welcome you because I was at the hospital, looking at an idiot who thought he could turn back, in spite of having those words burned into his skull. Let me welcome you with this. You're not here to learn to fly. Understand? Now you're here to save your skins. Think of it that way, you may live. To learn to fly. Lord! Farmer? Sure. Now, don't be worried. You'll like the Avro. You've never flown an Avro before, I take it. No, sir. As a matter of fact, right, sit and tickle her for a bit, get the feel of her, and you can show me what you can do. Right. Box kite for you, Gay Lion. Uh, it's pronounced Galian, sir. Right. Start off with, we'll be doing straights. Straight. Taking off, flying a few feet above the ground, landing again on the wood. Right then, gay lion. I'll show you the controls. You starting her up now? No. Thanks. I think I'll wait for Captain Trigger.
Freshening. Gotta go where we can. Left hand turn, right hand turn, bring her down, that's all. Now, very important, hand signals. I'll bang you twice on the shoulder, say you've got her. If you want to hand her back to me, you say you've got her, and you take your hand off the control, leave your feet off the bar. Hold your hand up for me to see. We're not magical minds in a music hall. Switch, on. Short, isn't it? liar farmer and you'd have killed us both sooner than admit it why the hell didn't you hand her back to me lying is one thing for god's sake stubborn stupidity is another do you know what my life is worth in this game farmer three halfpence at most but clever souls like you would have me give it away Whatever he said, I thought it was jolly brave of him. Just desperate. Ah, oh, you're right. I should have told the adjutant. Two pins, I'd have joined you. The idea of being on the end of that chap's vicious tongue for the next few weeks. Well, it's like being back at school under the heel of some rotten bully. You should have heard what he said after I flew my first straight. It's an aeroplane, you idiot, not a merry-go-round. Go. Oh, you should count yourself lucky. Sitting under a chestnut tree. Bashing out horseshoes while we're all here, breaking our necks and licking his boots for the privilege. Oh, it hardly seems fair. Chaps like me, all thumbs and two left feet, and getting a chance to take our tickets and you. Well, you actually flew it, Alan. And on your own. Well, 
Except for the last bit, of course. So that's the most important bit, isn't it? No, he's right. He could have killed us both. Oh, he's done us all a good turn. Well, I'm feeling positively ravenous. How about a spot of lunch, hmm? Rather not, if you don't mind. No. Well, good luck. Thanks, Charles. Oh, you, uh, might bash out a horse or two for me. I have a feeling I might need it. Home to mother. Tell me you're blacksmith. Yes, sir. I wonder you're so heavy-handed. You're pleased with yourself, are you? You could have landed at two if that old fool had interfered. Do you really think I left it to you up there? Do you know what would have happened if I had? Yes, sir. Oh, you know. You've never been up in a machine before today, but you know all the hazards. Catching the next train, are we? No, sir. Go on my motorcycle, sir. Good. Then we've time for a fond farewell. so soon. God, you look awful. You better sit down before you fall down. I'm not keeping you waiting, am I? I'm not keeping you waiting. Oh! Is that your motor car outside? Uh, yes, sir. It's a um, 60 horsepower Napier. Yes, sir. Very nice. I do pity her at the mercy of your loving hands. Still, now you sweat a bit and you might make your ticket. Thank you, sir. Don't thank me. You'll earn it, believe me. <sighs> now, about this flying you're supposed to have done. I shall tell the adjutant that you've picked up a lot of bad habits. You'll start from scratch, same as the others. Thank you. Be outside in half an hour. And I'm not flying till 9.30, so I don't have to leave till early Monday morning. Oh, you are going back? Yes. Well, Captain Trigger says I've got an even chance of taking my ticket. Oh, Lorna was here. If you'd been two minutes early... Well, Charles was buying some and I was in the shop with him, so... I thought I might as well. Oh. My hands are all flour. Shan't be long. You've only just missed her. Sure you are. Bye. Well. <laughs> I haven't managed to stop him rushing about. 
He's going back on Monday. Yeah, as he said. Tom and I have been talking. I said to Tom we should wait and see if Alan passes his test or not. If he passes, if he's accepted, that is, if he joins up, well, he'll be short of a man on there. I could do our jobs, fetch and carry. But, but as I said to Tom, it's, it's up to you. You're the boss round here now. Oh. What about the job at Claybones? What job? Watchdog to a lot of women. They'll fill that job easy enough. Well, if Tom thinks that's... No, 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 it's not what Tom thinks, it's what you think. Well, would it suit? I mean, for a minute... It would only be for the time being, till you find another man. And you go on living at Tom's? He won't have me live nowhere else. Fancy that. Well, we'd better talk about a wage for you then.